Right, Sandeep, thank you so much for speaking to us on medicine in a nutshell. Um, and you're a consultant in obstetrics and gynecology. That's correct. Um, so would you mind for viewers giving us a little um, overview on what obstetrics and gynecology is and what a consultant in that specialty does, please? So obstetrics and gynecology is a very wide-ranging specialty. It's about women's care, starting from the adolescent through the reproductive years and going past the menopause. It ranges from developmental anomalies young girls could be born with to endocrine problems happening in the um, adolescent age group. It talks about um, all, it deals with all the uh, menstrual problems women can have through reproductive age group, difficulty conceiving, which is infertility investigations, tumors such as fibroids, ovarian tumors, sexual health issues, and going on to menopausal problems. With the aging population, urinary incontinence, prolapse are becoming more and more common. And then there is a wide range of gynecological cancers. We are involved in preventing these cancers where we can, and early diagnosis uh, where um, possible. The big chunk of obstetrics, obviously, is pregnancy and childbirth. And it is a privilege to be involved in taking care of uh, people when they are um, increasing their family and uh, most people would assume this to be a straightforward process and have healthy babies but uh, nature doesn't always work like that and therefore we play a good part in um, making sure that you have healthy babies being more born to healthy mothers so it, it's it as you said it sounds like an extremely broad spectrum of activities so presumably in this day and age, like any other specialty, people have subspecialty interests, is that correct? Absolutely. We still have to be trained in the broad specialty because most hospitals will want us to do most of the work which women come with. But clearly we need specialization in today's day and age. And there is therefore the option of specializing into any of the branches. So there are advanced training modules we can train for. There is, in the last two to three years of training, the possibility of training only in a sub-branch. And the examples are training in maternal medicine, fetal medicine, which is scanning, looking for anomalies. There is the gynae-oncology, which is major surgery for gynae cancers, working in big teams with oncologists and clinical oncologists, radiologists, that is a multidisciplinary team approach. You can specialize into urinary uh, or urogynecology, which is incontinence and prolapse management. There is a special training in assisted reproductive technologies, which is managing infertility right up to the IVF and beyond. You can therefore train in various aspects, various fields. In, within these fields, you can have special expertise. So if you wanted to be a laparoscopic surgeon or an endoscopic surgeon, that's possible. And if you want to do more of office gynecology with a uh, focus on sexual health and family planning, that is equally possible. And could you give us an idea of the sort of training structure from, I guess, from when a person finishes their foundation years, what's the next step on and so on, please? Usually it's in the second year of foundation training that doctors would decide the speciality they want to go for. And if they choose obstetrics and gynecology, which I would recommend, um, they would need to apply um, with some references to, and then be selected for an interview process so that by the end of their FY2, they would then be selected to go for uh, run through training. This goes through a step ST1 to ST7, which is specialist training post one through to year seven. The seven years in, include the first two years of working as a first on call, which was SHO in old money. And then they become the second on call or registrars in, in the old language which takes them through ST3 to ST7. In, by, after ST7, they will get a completion of training uh, certificate or a CCT, after which they can apply to be consultant. Those who want to do a sub-specialization or into a smaller focus can in the last two years of training decide to do that. And most of these training courses take two to three years depending upon which subject they choose. So that's within the so ST6 and 7, or is it after they finish ST7? Some people choose to finish ST7 and then go for specialization. 
but others who would uh, have decided beforehand that they would like to subspecialize can apply an ST6 and join the training course in ST7, which means they would train one year less in the general category and do more of their focused subspecialty training. And so the the the, the, um, the initial run getting on to run through from uh, foundation is how competitive is that? Please, I mean, how easy is it to yeah, land the job, or what should people do? That sort of thing. It is competitive, but I wouldn't say it's um, very difficult to get into. If you want to do the speciality um, and you've had at least the three three months during foundation year when you have been in obstetrics and gynecology and have got uh, a good reference, there should be no problem in really getting through. And is there, is there, other than interviews, is there like an exam, like for GP training, for instance? There isn't a clinical exam, but they have an assessment center where there'll be a few skilled stations. Um, so a, a range of um, uh, examiners will be talking about different, different situations. And it's more of skill, skill training, communications, uh, like an OSAT-based um, uh, OSAT um, assessment. And getting back to the um, specialty training, at some point during the specialty training, there will be an exit exam, is that correct? During the specialty training, everybody has to go through with their Royal College membership exam. So the MRCOG part one, which is basic sciences, is usually taken in the first three years of training. And it is mandatory to finish the part two before they can become an ST5. So the last three years, everybody should have done their completed membership training exam. And what's the um, what's what's the market out there for obstetricians in terms of in the UK? Are we do we have a shortage of them? If people go into obs and gynae, are they likely to get a job as a consultant in this country? I think it's an extremely good market point of view because uh, all hospitals need um, consultants in obstetrics and gynecology. The number of uh, deliveries are going up, which means we need more people. Um, medical conditions are getting more complex, especially with pregnancy care, and therefore there is a Royal College uh, initiative in having consultants present for longer hours, which means all hospitals are now looking at employing more consultants. So over the next few years, or many years, there will be definitely a need for more consultants in the speciality. Why do you like being an obstetrics and gynecology consultant? The main thing which got me into the speciality was the wide range of things I, I could practice. As a junior doctor, I liked medicine. I want, want, wanted to be a physician, but I equally liked surgery. And this was one speciality which gave me the option of uh, doing both. So you can have as much knowledge of endocrinology to medical disorders and do surgery. The level of surgery you can do can range from office-based surgery uh, to endoscopic surgery to major operations. So the wide range was really what attracted me initially to it. And then, as I said, it's almost a privilege being uh, on the delivery suite, taking part in difficult deliveries and, and being part of a happy family. It's very satisfying. So the pregnancy care bit gives you immense satisfaction on a daily basis. And um, most surgical procedures in gynecology, again, are uh, very specific. And I think, again, immense satisfaction is achieved uh, at the end result. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Sanyu. That's a really comprehensive insight into the specialty of obstetrics and gynecology. One final question, if I may. Um, you guys still don't smack the bottoms of the babies when they deliver, do you? <laughs> no, now we give a gentle rub and rub and wrap them in a towel. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you.